The Rangers head into a crucial weekend series against the Padres, coming off a spicy finale in Houston on today's show. I'm crossing over with Javi Reyes of Locked On Padres to talk about if these teams could make a trade and what we're looking for in this weekend, weekend series. All that and more on this episode of Locked On Rangers and Locked On Padres. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked onto the Texas Rangers. I'm Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Ranger fan since 2010, the founder and host for all five seasons of this Locked On Rangers podcast. Thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. If you're not already, you can follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. You can follow the show at Locked On Rangers. Subscribe on YouTube where the best way you can help grow the show is to comment nearly any single thing below. Today is Friday, July 28th, and your Rangers are 60 and 43, alone in first place in the ALS, two games ahead of those stupid, stinking Houston Astros. Heading into a weekend series against the Padres, the last series before the trade deadline. And joining me today is the one, the only, the great Javier Reyes, host of Locked On Padres. How you doing, my guy? Let me tell you how I'm doing. <clears throat> Here's how I'm doing. I am going through it. We are persevering through the, 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 the fire and flames on max difficulty. Shout out Guitar Hero. I just think that we're, we're at a very interesting time because this is what determines so much about the Padres and what they are. Obviously, the Rangers, too. I mean, both of our teams very relevant at this trade deadline. At least we're relevant. At least we're not un ir ir irrelevant. You know, at least stuff is happening. Uh, and I'm excited. And people might think that I, I want to beat the crap out of the Rangers. Of course I do. But it's not really the thing I'm looking forward to uh, the most this weekend, obviously, with the deadline. So, man, uh, just... Going through, going through the motions. You know what I mean? We're, it feels like we're at the quiet before the storm of our teams, I should say. I know we already had some big trades, but it feels like our teams are on the precipice of doing what they do, I guess. Both of our teams have kind of made crazy moves over the past few years, so I'm excited. Yeah, these are both very, very busy teams and teams that are probably going to be busy at the deadline. And the Rangers were busy with a rather intense rivalry game against the Houston Astros with some benches clearing and some Marcus Simeon getting mad. I mean, the most <laughs> even keeled guy, the most chillest of vibes in all of Major League Baseball. Uh, he, he took some exception. There was some fireworks happening, mainly the Rangers just absolutely destroying the Astros in the finale of that series, 13 to five and, and beating the tar nation out of Fromber Valdez, one of the better pitchers in baseball. It really didn't look like it. Valdez didn't have his command and, and, uh, he ended up nailing Marcus Simeon with a pitch after Jordan Alvarez was hit with an O2 pitch by Andrew Heaney, which obviously was not intentional. You're not going to hit the best hitter on an O2 count. You're just you're just not going to do that. That's not a thing mm -hmm. that happens. But on the very first pitch that Marcus Simeon faced from Revaldez next, he got drilled with 94 miles an hour in the arm, took exception to it later, homered, stared, jabbed while he was going around the bases. Um, and then Martin Maldonado wanted to play tough guy cop and and tell him that he, he couldn't do that. And Marcus Simeon mm. just mm. shushed him. He shushed mm. him. Mm. Javi, how do you how do you feel about about? Players like Martin Maldonado trying to trying to police the fun being had or the celebration by by players like Marcus Simeon, who doesn't even do this very much, if ever, I think, in his Rangers career. So a couple things. First of all, just Brian McCann energy. You know what I mean? Atlanta <laughs> Braves, Brian McCann energy, policing the sport, uh, just incredible stuff. It has always, always looked great when we had that in this league. Uh, there's definitely not any harmful subtext there but that and number two at i will give him credit at least the team supported him unlike wilson Contreras, who took issue with i forgot who was jorge soler uh for drawing soler. a walk and he was pumped and literally no one on the cardinals was like down for uh wilson Contreras acting up and whatnot so shouts to that so i will give Bertie Maldonado out of that at least it seems like he's respected by his teammates um, but yeah, it was stupid. I, I looked at it. It's dumb. It's just very like, especially from the Astros, um, which is a team that has had their own share of controversy slash weird baseball related behavior, I guess is the way to call it, um, without getting too deep into it. 
um because it's it's a tired topic at this point but yeah it, it, it's lame it's lame and i have to admit you know my team just went through the same thing although albeit to a, a, a different degree different context with uh manny machado being drilled by um angel perdomo of the pittsburgh pirates after soto had hit a home run <laughs> he's just it was just one home run. They weren't even winning by a lot. It's like a five one game that they ended up winning. Like and you just got really upset and they ejected the guy. So again, this doesn't belong in the sport whatsoever. And you know, it's it's unfortunate. But at least you guys are are looking good. You know, yeah. at least you guys have looking stuff really good. to be excited about. Unlike my team, where we're just like I mean, we were talking before we recorded this about like the Pythagorean win loss record that baseball reference does a stat that I had not checked out in quite a long time. And you just reminding me like I'm their sorry. Pythagorean win loss is 57 and 46, 11 games under 500. And instead they're five under 500. It is just like, <laughs> I, I honestly think that my analysis of the 2023 Padres can end right there. Honestly, I really yeah. think that's all I have to say. Like it, it's, it's kind of incredible. Fitting. I don't know if you saw the uh, there's one moment that I don't think was captured on camera, at least not on the Rangers broadcast where they were showing the home run. But when Marcus Simeon rounded the bases and stepped on home plate uh, after Adoles Garcia's massive, beautiful mammoth grand slam, uh, he just hopped on there just like a little bunny, two feet on home plate. And uh, some Astros Twitter guy got mad and everyone dunked on him. And it was really funny. And I personally want to see Marcus Simeon hop on home plate every single time from now on because mm-hmm. it's amazing and adorable. And uh, I, I like seeing this team win a bunch of baseball games, which which my team has been doing. Your team has not been doing as nope. much. And it, it seems like they're heading in opposite ways at this trade deadline. Um, but I mean, I I just love the rivalry aspect. I don't think these two teams have a rivalry. I mean, it would be fun if they did. It, I feel like they were the makings of one after the 2020 season when uh, I think we did our, our it might have been our first crossover. I don't know if it was. We might have done one before then. Um, mm. But in in the wake of the Grand Slam gate, Slam Diego <laughs> and and Chris yeah. Woodward, who is is no longer with us. RIP in pieces. Actually, he's he's fine. I think he's with the Dodgers being a bench coach or something. Hope he's happy. Um, but uh, yeah, the Rangers have a different vibe there. And it's good to see them being on, on the right side of history and, and flexing their muscles on some people. Yeah, absolutely. Always flex as look. Obviously, if someone starts doing inappropriate, you know, gestures on the side and they're like doing the, the crazy things to you, uh, I almost did what, what? What was it? What was it? Um, uh, Gilly Aguilar. Aguilar. Yes, thank you. I, I love how you knew what I was talking about. I knew Aguilar. exactly. I knew where yeah. you're going with it. <laughs> he, hey, Darvish is on my team, so uh-huh. that's why I remember. And we both like, love you, Darvish. As long as you're not doing that type of nonsense, like, oh, he walked around the bases slow, or he ran around the bases too fast. I said on my show yesterday that men are the second softest species that this earth has. Uh, Baseball pitchers are number one. It goes baseball pitchers and then men in general for the softest (laughs) that our species has to offer. Uh, Just incredible stuff uh, by the Astros and the Rangers and whoever uh, we're alluding to. Right. Uh, It's just it's nuts. But hey, again, I mean, this is going to be I really do think that this is going to be a deadline that is vitally important for both teams in, in a bunch of different ways. Um, Padres, because they might need to sell. And then Rangers, because, you know, they've taken some hits, particularly with their rotation. Um, and they clearly have enough to make a run. So now it's just a question of what are the final pieces that can help push them over the top? And I'm not totally sure. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe they're they're currently on the Padres. Maybe they are. And in the next segment, we'll get into some hypothetical <laughs> trades of the Rangers and Padres could make. Maybe we get to watch guys walk into a different dugout this weekend. But first, let's hear from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. For a championship team, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right, just like any hypothetical trades the Rangers might be doing for their potential championship team. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guaranteed Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits just right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know if the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop at eBay Motors. And with over 122 million different parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. 
Shout out to the Everydayers for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. On Saturday's show, I'll be talking about what happened in the minor leagues this week with special guest Rangers prospect Cam Cully. You'll want to make sure you check that out. The Rangers take on the Padres this weekend. You can catch every pitch for the hometown broadcast on SiriusXM. Just download the SXM app and search Rangers, or if you're a Padres fan, search Padres, which I guess you get both this weekend. But these two teams are heading in different places at the break. I'm curious, of of the players on the Padres right now, who do you think is most likely to be traded? Uh, it's definitely Josh Hader and Blake Snell. I mean, those are the ones everyone's talking about. Been conflicting reports whether or not they're going to sell. Uh, I think Preller is crazy enough to buy. Um, and I just, oh my God, I almost had a heart attack with the Jeff Bassa notification. Um, but I think that those guys, you know, they're going to be free agents after this offseason and they're going to get paid a whole lot. Probably I will. There's actually a strong possibility that Blake Snell is the number one starting pitcher um, on the market in the offseason. And I, I think undoubtedly Josh Hader will be the number one reliever. So we just saw what the White Sox got um, in exchange for Lucas Giolito and Renato Lopez, who no offense, those guys are not as good or as, you know, on, on a hot streak as much as Blake Snell and Josh Hader. So you could get a whole lot, and then you could retool for next year. The The counter to that would be, well, you're the Padres, and you're clearly a team that's set up to win now. You're not going to be getting another that same level of value from other pitchers or uh, that you would get from Blake Snell and Josh Hader that you're getting right now. My response to that is, look, man, the, the Orioles went out and didn't spend a damn thing, and they have a better record than us despite us having a better run differential. So, um, And while that, that goes against... Uh, you and me both talking about how we want teams to spend because that's usually how you win the World Series. What I'm saying is the Padres don't need to. Like, they have their stars in place. That's why I'm a proponent of building around the edges. If we didn't have Machado or Tatis or Soto or Xander, then I'd be like, heck, heck yeah. Go out also and your spend star everything Grisham. you have. Yeah, it's Trent Grisham. Yeah, love <laughs> Trent Grisham. Um, and then, of course, Hassan Kim, who's a stud as well. Um, love him very much. Uh, like they have the stars, so they should be prioritizing finding a little bit of depth. You'll have Musgrove, you have Darvish for better or worse. He's been really bad this year, but you know, maybe he can bounce back next season. You maybe you can keep around a Michael Waka, Seth Lugo, whatever. Um, I just think like you can't just keep extending and signing everyone on your roster, especially when it hasn't really amounted to too much. You know, it's not been terrible, but it hasn't amounted to enough. It's not like this is the 90s Yankees that have won three World Series in a row or whatever. Like, and then after that, you're just like, screw it, extend everybody. We don't care. Uh, like, I, I really think that they should be selling. Um, I understand the counter that Snell and Hader going to be hard to give you guys next year. That'll be like that. But this team needs depth uh, really badly. And I think that if you get some prospects that are somewhat ready to go, maybe you get some just highly prized prospects to maybe flip them into something else later. I don't know. But I just think these two guys are likely to leave. So you should be trading them. Yeah, I think so too. And I think that's definitely the move, especially if, if this is the price that the people are asking uh, for these rentals, then these are going to be two of the best rentals on the market, if not the two best, which I, I think they are the two best. And I would, would love for the Rangers to trade for them, depending on, of course, what it costs. But uh, I, I'm curious, uh, in terms of, you talked about depth, is that is that kind of what's what's wrong with this Padres team? Because, I mean, you look at, like, uh, the stats of some of their stars, and everyone looks like they're contributing in big ways. Hassan Kim is, you know, a five-war player at this point, which yeah. is just awesome. I remember when whenever the Padres signed him, I wanted Hassan Kim so badly, and I was mm -hmm. a deeply broken man. That was the best that I could hope for, not knowing that Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager would be coming, like, the very next year. So yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's worked out for both teams, but... In terms of depth, is that is it the lineup depth? Is it the starting pitching depth? Like what what is it that this team could use improved depth on? It is depth for sure. Every time they have any sort of injury, whether it be in the rotation or the lineup, like you see them having to call up prospects, minor leaguers that have never been good. They're not highly regarded. They are forced to bring in someone like Jackson Wolf, who's their 16th ranked prospect. They have to play some guys like Tyler Colway, who had like a WRC plus below 100 in the minors. Like it's not like he was all that great, but they're so desperate for anybody that can potentially give anything. So that has been a problem, but also it has been a lot of stars not playing like stars. Manny Machado has been one of the best bats in baseball only for the month of July though. Uh, before that on base percentage below 300 every single month, he for the first month was one of only 30 players in negative F4. He started off horrible. Bogarts start off great. And now he's basically just a super expensive defensive player. 
Uh, that's how that's how bad he's been at the plate uh, for the Padres. And you've got Soto and you've got Tatis. And even with Xander and Machado, the big frustrating thing has been the story of this season is that they leave too many guys on base. They don't bring anybody in. And don't get me wrong. I get that depth matters. But even still, it shouldn't be even with Manny and Xander and all all those guys struggling. You shouldn't be hitting this poorly with runners and scoring. You know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of. It's insane. And everyone who said, oh, well, you have to have depth. I know. I know that like the San Francisco Giants have a crazy amount of depth with their lineup. But there are other teams that don't have nearly as much that the Padres do. And maybe they can match them on a one for one star level, but they don't have as many. And they're doing fine with bringing in runners. Right. Like so that's been the most frustrating part is it's bringing runners. It's loser energy. Their bullpen is great. It is elite, elite as long as you are not holding a lead. Otherwise, you are better odds at, you know, me throwing or, you know, whoever throwing like that's just it's not good. They look terrible. And then you have the defense. That's great. Doesn't matter, though. It's just they either go down by two runs early and you can see it, Bryce. And I implore you and and your listeners to watch the Padres this weekend just to I don't know, just to uh, satiate, just, just to placate my feelings or whatever that. If you see it, you will see if the Rangers go up by like, let's say they go up three in the second inning. Let's say that Uh, you will see actively the Padres look like there's just no fight in them whatsoever. Ground outs, swinging at bad pitches, swings that look like your soul left your body halfway (laughs) through and you just gave up. It's just it's it's frustrating. Uh, Yeah, you'll get some you'll get some great starting pitching. I promise you that even against the Rangers team, it will be hard to hit this Padres team and you're not going to get any free hits because they have two gold glovers on their team, uh, or at least I should say future gold glove winners on their team and past gold glove winners on their team. They're going to be great in that regard. Um, but in terms of the rest, I just... Uh, it's re- it's really rough, man. But I have to say, our two teams are kind of a match right now. What is, what is going on? Do you think that the Rangers are a good spot for Blake Snell and Josh Hader? What's the farm system look like? What's your current team constructed like? What's going on? Give it to me. I will, right after this word from our sponsors. So this is the perfect team to make a trade for Blake Snell and Josh Hader. This is a Rangers team with one of the deepest farm systems in all of baseball, Mm -hmm. a team that while John Daniels is no longer there, so there's not really that same connection of John Daniels and AJ Preller Mm because AJ Preller came up under yeah. John Daniels and, and all that nonsense. But I mean, maybe former, former uh, JD protege to, I guess, kind of current, more recent JD protege in Chris Young could be a big, big place for the Rangers. Cause they, they need some starting pitching help. They need somebody who they yeah. can start in a playoff game. They've got a yep. good rotation. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll see if, if we get to see Nathan Eovaldi, he is, I think tentatively, maybe going to be the one that starts on the Sunday game. He skipped his last start. His velocity was down two miles an hour on his fastball, the last start. And it had been down um, a couple of starts before then. And for some reason they decided to pitch him in the all-star game. I don't freaking know why there was absolutely no reason for him to do that. It's fine. I'm fine. Clearly not still bitter and mad about it, but there's been no IL stint. So I think we're doing okay, but you'll see the other two starters are probably the, the four and five guys, maybe the, three and four guys. It depends on the day. Um, but the one and two is clear of John Gray and Nathan Eovaldi, not in that order. Um, but the other three are Andrew Heaney, Dane Dunning and Martin Perez Dunning has been fantastic this year. He has mm-hmm. been very, very good. His last start, he got absolutely annihilated by the Dodgers. Freddie Freeman just tore the Rangers to pieces when he came yeah. to town a week ago. i very excited to not see him again for a while. Um, But this team also needs some bullpen help. They've got, they made the trade for Aralis Chapman. They have got Will Smith, who's been very good, very consistent back there. Brock Burke is another lefty. That's also very good, very consistent. Hopefully we think Josh Boers might, I think he's eligible on Friday today, as you're listening to this, to come off the IL to start this series. He has been a very effective righty. His numbers don't look great, but he was pitching through bicep tendonitis. So I think that's kind of why his last couple of outings, he, he blew up, but you can always use more bullpen help. I mean, who's going to say no, to a Josh Hader, um, one of the best relievers in all of baseball this year. And in terms of who you feel comfortable starting at a playoff start, Nathan Yavaldi, John Gray, I feel very confident starting those guys game one, one and two. Um, but if you can add a Blake Snell to start him, maybe game two instead of John Gray, and then you have, well, 
three lefties in your rotation, which I think is fine. I think that might move uh, either Heaney or Dunning back to the pen. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what they would do with that. It kind of depends. Maybe they just go with a six man rotation to kind of space things out and keep this rotation healthy. Cause again, there's a lot of injury concerns with these guys. You have has been hurt a lot. John Gray has been hurt a lot. Um, Heaney as well. So just kind of, and well, Jacob DeGrom has been hurt a lot and pitched for a month and boy, that was a fun month. Um, but he is not pitching until mid season next year. So that's a very long winded way of saying, uh, yeah, I think these teams could absolutely make a trade and I think they should. It feels like a perfect kind of marriage, right? And I know you mentioned, you know, Preller's old buddies aren't necessarily there anymore, but who knows? He's still got an affinity for Texas for whatever reason. I mean, he brought Jorge Alfaro onto the team last year. You know what I mean? Rudin Odor. Brunetto door. No, we just no more Mazzara. Yeah. Like it's just, they love do- He loves doing this. So maybe he just, maybe it's one of those things where they're in constant contact because he's just so familiar with that organization. And yeah, like, I mean, like you said, look, the, the Rangers have that type of rotation where it's just, it's just missing its horse. You know what I mean? Like it's missing its big one because yeah. it has the peak number two in a guy like Eovaldi. It has a bunch of guys who, if one of them is great for you, uh, almost Astros like where it's like none of them are ace qualities by themselves, but they're all really exciting guys to have if they're like your number three. With it's Dunning, a really good compliment, with, but with also Heaney. a really big insult of saying it's Astros like. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, it was the first thing that came to mind. I'm sorry. You're not um, you're not wrong. You're not yeah, wrong. I know. It's just it, it, it's a solid rotation. But the problem is you just brought up Dane Dunning getting lit up by Freddie Freeman when the Rangers get into the playoffs, they may be facing a lot better batters. So while I'm not saying that that means that those guys are going to get killed, you feel a lot better. If you have a little bit more of a proven commodity, a little bit more of a bona fide like stud as your starting pitcher, unfortunately, Jacob DeGrom gets hurt. They would have had it. Hey, if DeGrom was healthy, maybe they even might be interested in getting Snell just because they've, they, they have enough to trade for him uh, seemingly do. based on what you're saying. So look, the Rangers are ready and they're going for it. And on offense, they can keep up with anybody. Um, but in the postseason, it's nice to have some pitchers that if you have to, you know, in a big game and Snell has had, you know, big games before he was super successful, obviously, famously the World Series. I imagine that if he's four innings and has nine K's with no hits, the Rangers won't pull him like the, no, the Rays. Boji yeah. not pulling him. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and don't get me wrong. Snell's pitch count can get up there. But anyway, that was just idiotic. But. You know, the Rangers offense, first in batting average, first in on base, first in runs, fifth in home runs, uh, second in slugging percentage. They don't seem to need a bat. Uh, you know what I'm they, saying? Like, they I don't think that's what they, they have need. less than zero need for a bat. Like, literally, yeah. everybody on this team is hitting, including former Padre great Travis Jankowski. He has an 823 <laughs> OPS this year, hitting 323 with a 409 on base. Depth, 409 man. on base Depth, with his man. defense. It's, it's insane. And he wasn't even going to be on the roster. Like he was going to be, if not for Leo Tavares, uh, side injury. What mm-hmm. is it? The um, uh, the twisty one. What? Why can I? Oblique. That's that's what it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the twisty. One. Um, if not for a Leo oblique injury, Jankowski was going to be DFA'd and not make the opening day roster. But thank the good Lord for an oblique injury because Travis Jankowski has been absolutely sensational. So like mm-hmm. this team is incredibly deep from one through nine. The Braves are the only lineup I think that are anywhere close to as good. I think the Braves might be a little bit better, but like mm-hmm. only because Corey Seager's not here just yet. I think he's got another um, four or five days on the IL, which it mm-hmm. should just be the 10 day stint on that IL. It shouldn't be any more time. Thankfully it looked worse than it was. He got injured on Friday against the Dodgers so about a week ago. So I guess it'll be three more days if that math is mathing correctly. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, again, it's just like they have the stars that the on the level of the Padres, right? Obviously, Corey Seager is just going nuclear this year. Uh, mm-hmm. I know he's hurt, like you said, but even still, he'd been going nuclear. And they even have like a guy like Brad Miller, who I know has been hurt for a while, hasn't played a lot, but a 100 WRC plus. That's the type of player that the Padres need. Just the utility. You could throw them out there in the right situation. You know what I mean? Like these average players. That's what I think would happen if the Padres become buyers is they might build around the edges and just get some random bad. Carlos Santana just got traded. I thought that one might be one that makes sense. Just plug him in at DH. He's not going to be amazing, but he's not terrible. He's not Colway or any of these guys that you can't trust to just be be hitters, right? I mean, this is a team that was starting Austin Nola for the longest time, and that guy has a lower slugging percentage than, I don't know, like name, name a pitcher on your team that has hit before. Pretty sure Blake Snell had a better uh, slugging percentage when he was hitting. <clears throat> 
Uh, so that just shows you where they are. But Leody Tavares, 112 WRC plus, like just these solid players. And then you need depth to build, but then you need the guys to put you over the top. And like you mentioned, you know, I mean, Adolis Garcia, right? They have good defense. Defense, uh, obviously Jonah Heim behind the plate. Yeah. All of your all stars that were in the All Star game, like all this team has them. it all. They're, they're right. It's just they are so primed to go for it that it actually would be. I would be shocked if they didn't at least inquire uh, with the Padres and be like, "Look, hey AJ, what's going on? Hey, 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 don't worry that that rib place is still open. Yeah, 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 yeah. The kids are good. Yeah, yeah, they're doing good. All right, all right. So what's going on? What's going on, Blake? What's going on with 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 Balake? Uh, for fans of uh, Key and Peel, right? Like, what's going on with them? What's going on with Hater? It just feels like a match made in heaven, and I'd be for it. I don't know exactly. I'm not a big prospect expert. I know you guys drafted Jack Leiter a few years ago, I think. Mm-hmm. When yes. was that last year? A few years ago? Two years uh, ago. Like him. I know Owen White is a big player for them. I don't know mm-hmm. if that's too high of a price. I don't think. I don't think anyone is a high of a price because of how good they are. It would have to think. be. For, to think? get, if, like, if it was to include... If it was to include both of them, then the Rangers would. Ha- I don't think there would be anybody else in that deal. I think it would be just those two for Snell and Hater, and I think that would be. It they might throw it somewhere else, like a little bit lower in there, like maybe, maybe a Jonathan Ornelas type who is a mm-hmm. super utility guy who can play yeah. literally everywhere and is not a great hitter, but he's fine um, mm-hmm. and just a very valuable like twenty sixth man on your roster um, that could be in the big leagues. I think in like I don't know by the end of the year at the very least he's been triple a and he's been fine there. And I, I really like the kid. Mm-hmm. He's a really, really good clubhouse guy. So I, I think that those three, I think that would be enough to get the deal done. We'll have to see what this prospect land shape, like what this, what the landscape looks like yeah. with, with all these deals, but the, the angels set the tone. I thought the Rangers were going to set it with that deal for Chapman and giving up um, Cole Reagan's, which feels like a decent price. Cause Cole Reagan's was a guy who was throwing in his, in the low nineties and then worked on his, his body and some stuff and started throwing 95 and touching 99 this, mm-hmm. this off season, or this spring, which nobody saw coming. And so that's kind of why that was the only piece that was, that was in that Chapman deal, as well as uh, a flyer on a guy who's in the Dominican summer league, who I yeah. can't even think of his name, but you know. Yeah. I mean, as lo- I think that the Padres are going to be looking for some, some highly valued prospects, but also maybe a guy who, can at least come up, not even someone who they think is going to be a star. But Justin someone who Foskew might... is a name yeah, who okay. I think I think would would be that kind of guy. If you're looking for just a DH, he plays second and third base, and he's not mm-hmm. very good at either of them. But the dude can hit. He walks more than he strikes mm-hmm. out. He's got an on base of 400. He's got an OPS around uh, 900 in AAA this year. Doesn't and is he pretty... relatively ready? I think that's oh a big he's part ready. He too. could come up right now. He could so come that's up... a big thing. I think the Padres. But there's no place for get... him on the Rangers. Like I think so he... Padres would try to get prospect value, but they would also be like, let's get someone who's like pretend um, like if someone's at single A and he was your top level prospect. I don't think that that's someone necessarily the Padres would want. I'm not trying to be mean either. I'm just saying like no, I think pretend... so. You got to you got to you got to balance your window and yeah. They got window window, right now so. in the next like three years, as long as yeah. Juan Soto is there. Yeah. So I think that I, I love that idea. I, I love that idea. Maybe you throw in like we were talking about with Owen White or Jack Light or one of those guys. I think that'd make a lot of sense. Maybe the Padres kick in a reliever or something like that, like an extra one. Maybe they throw in something. I don't know. But I just I would love that. I would love that. I, I look and I you got a, you got an extra righty reliever that, that you can throw in because the Rangers uh, extra, could use a righty an extra righty reliever. I'm trying to think who the heck do we even have? Is Tim uh, Hill a righty? I don't think he is. Right? Nope, he is not. He is not a, a lefty. Um, okay. Br- bring Nick Martinez back? <laughs> I mean, on that contract, I don't know if they'll want him. And also, oh, I forgot I, about Not that the it's contract. crazy. Not um, that it's a crazy contract, but... What's Stephen what? Wilson's contract look like? He is a righty with a sub-3 ERA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I don't think they're going to trade him, though. That's the thing. Is like, he young? In control? Yeah. Uh, okay. Let me see. He's 28, and I think they have control over him. Hmm. You would be looking at someone... <laughs> Ryan Weathers interest you? Um, no, not not as much as he did like three years ago. <laughs> uh, Brent Honeywell, that honestly, it's not terrible. Brent Honeywell, I think, could be. The he's match. got he's got good stuff, he's, right? Yeah, he's got decent stuff. Some of his changeup stuff can be can be pretty solid, but he's he's been regressing a little bit as like a back end piece. I could see it. Not obviously not as like the big big thing. I'm just thinking about like who they would have to trade. Matt Waldron, Brand. No. Yeah, I mean that's that's probably it. look, Nick Martinez would make sense. 
but also he's been struggling lately and also the contract yeah. i just yeah don't and see it, so. the, the stuff's not the Rangers are looking for some kind of right-handed fireballer because they don't have a yeah. lot of guys with elite. They have, I mean, they've got Josh Boards, but like other than that, the righties don't have the most explosive stuff. The lefties, well, I mean, Will Smith doesn't exactly have a, a fireball of a 93-mile-an-hour fastball, but the, the breaking stuff for Will Smith is very effective, and, and Chapman has definitely got that gas back there. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe they'll see a little bit of Alex Spice, um, which yeah. was a fun story, but I don't know when he'll be back in the big leagues um, or if it'll be particularly soon. But yeah, I like that potential deal of Snell and Hayter to the Rangers for um, yeah Justin Foscue, um, Owen White, and... Um, I don't know, Thomas to JC, who's an infielder mm-hmm. crushing it at double A right or now. Or instead of white, lighter. Like, but like those, that seems like the makeup. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. just a prospect who looks good and could be a DH and could be ready pretty quick. And then some highly priced guy and then whatever. I feel like that's what kind of what we're looking at. And I think it'd be great. And I think the Rangers are incentivized because of how good they've been. So yeah. I can't wait, man. I can't would, wait. Honestly, we, we might break get the an announcement. Either. We, yeah, like we exactly. That's the big like, thing. And they've got, because I mean, yeah. Because it feels weird of like, oh, you got to go all in for this year. But also, you don't even have Jacob DeGrom this year. Like, mm-hmm. so it feels like hard to be like, oh, yeah, let's just go all in when we don't have Jacob freaking DeGrom. But yeah, you got Nathan Eovaldi, who's been incredible this year. One of the best pitchers will be in the Cy Young conversation. Should be a fun series. Hopefully we get to see him on Sunday and his velocity returns. And I can stop worrying about the health of him and everything. Um, and should be a very, very fun series. Javi, where can the fine folks listening to Locked On Rangers find you and all of your good work? Uh, thank you, sir. You can find me at Javapeno, J-A-V-I-I-P-E-N-O. I tweet a lot of nonsense on there, baseball stuff for sure. But if you only want baseball stuff and none of my weird ramblings about other things, totally understand at L-O underscore Padres, where I usually live tweet the games. I'm probably going to be reacting and begging AJ Peller to kill me again after this weekend. Um <laughs> That, that's a lot of fun. And then Lockdown Padres on YouTube to see my buddy Pac-Man and little Tatis. If you want to say hi to them, they're here for you and they love you very much. Um, even if you're a Dodger guy, you know, they, they wow. even they have love for you. They're happy that you're here. They're so, so go sweet. check them out and say hi. Well, fine folks listening to Lockdown Padres can find me on Twitter at Bryce Paddock. You can find the show wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. We are hopefully going to hit that, maybe maybe hit the 3,000 subscriber mark by the end of the year. I don't know. Depends on if the Rangers go to the World Series, which if they make this trade, my bet is that they do. Should be yeah. a lot of fun. A fun weekend. Javi, thank you so much for joining me, y'all. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy first place Texas Rangers baseball.